Welcome. Once again, your saltwater guide. Happy Monday, Monday, Monday. Thank you all for joining us today. We got a pretty good show for you today, I think. You'll uh, let me know by the views and the likes and all the other stuff. So we're going to get going in a couple seconds here. But first of all, we got a shout out for the show. We're, we're not going to be able to do our live show tomorrow, Tuesday, because we'll be flying to beautiful Southern California to come up there for the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Festival. So Kelly and I will be busy tomorrow flying. We're going to have a good show for you, though, on Wednesday. From the show floor, while we're setting up the booth, we'll go live from Del Mar or or from Orange County Fairgrounds. We're going to go live from the fairgrounds on Wednesday as we're setting up our booth. Hopefully, we can grab a few guys that are walking around, industry people. The person I'm going to be looking for the most is Wayne from CCA. I'm going to try to reach out to Wayne and see if he can spend a couple minutes on our show with us on Wednesday because this 30 by 30 is coming down the pipe, and it is scary, scary, scary stuff. So hopefully, we can get Wayne to come by the booth at the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Festival on the setup day on Wednesday. I'm hoping and hoping and hoping we can get Wayne on the show so we can uh, so we can get a little more clarity on this 30 by 30 and get more of you involved in the CCA program because it's our only voice at the table, gang. And they're coming for us this time harder and bigger than ever before. The last thing they want to see is anyone that looks like me with the suntan. Any type of coloration on their skin, boy, we are the enemy. If they find out we go outside and enjoy ourselves, they're coming after us big time. So hopefully if anybody knows Wayne or sees him at the show or talks to him in the next two days, tell him Captain Dave wants to see if he can do a couple minutes on the show on Wednesday from the show floor. We're all, believe me, everybody's going to be super busy. I'll be super busy at the show. Wednesday, but we're going to take a few minutes out of our busy day to do the live show from the show floor at 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you're there. Those of you watching are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcast or Megaphone, I want to thank you all very, very much. I cannot believe how fast we're growing. Our podcast is going bananas. And that show with Paul was pretty spectacular. And I don't know if any of you, hey, there's Marley. He is wound up running around back there. If anybody hasn't seen our show before, that's our rescue monkey. That's Marley, the rescue monkey. We saved him down here from a family. And uh, he's definitely part of our family. He's Kelly and I's little boy, Marley. But uh, back to what I was saying, the podcast is growing leaps and bounds on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And it's all because of those of you that are listening and subscribing. I want to thank everybody. I can't do this without all of you. And I do appreciate everybody. We're going to have a really good character on the show on the 10th, on my son Sean's birthday. We're going to have this uh, man named Luke McFadden. And I don't know if you've been following him on Facebook or Instagram, but man, he is, he is showing the East Coast fishery, commercial fishery, where your food comes from, like no one's ever done. And so we're going to have Luke on the show on the 10th. It's going to be insane. I want you all to tune in and watch. And I want you to go look at Luke McFadden's Instagram and Facebook pages and his YouTube channel. He is absolutely extraordinary. When you talk to him and when you listen to him on his show, he seems like a very old soul. He's a young man. He's only 27, 26, 27 years old. But man, when you listen to him talk and you watch how he represents the United States of America and how he represents the hard industry of commercial fishing to get our food for us on the East Coast, it is absolutely incredible to see how in-depth he goes and how spectacular it is to watch this oyster fishery on the East Coast. And we'll have him live on our show on the 10th. So don't miss it. Set your watch, set your calendar, gang. And you're just joining us. And we have a lot of people joining us right now. We will not be able to do the show live tomorrow. Kelly and I will be on an airplane flying up to beautiful Southern California. The show starts on Thursday. We have to fly in tomorrow and jump on it quick and set up our booth Wednesday morning and be ready to meet and greet all of you. And all of you that show up wearing one of these shirts, 
The bag of stuff we have to give away is absolutely incredible. You are going to be very, very sad if you're walking around the show without my shirt on and you see all these people walking around with all the free stuff that they're getting. You still have a chance. You can call my number, 949-374-0786, and you can get one of these shirts at the show from us, and that'll be as good as wearing it when you get there. You get there, I will have the shirts for you at the show. You change real quick and put on this shirt, walk the floor, you'll get free stuff. You don't get, a free, you don't get free stuff if you buy the shirt and put it in your bag. If you're not representing, we're not giving free stuff away. Let's be honest. And Marley wants you to get free stuff, right, Mar? You want him to get free stuff, right, little monk man? All right, gang. So today's show is talking about what it's going to be like to fish in cold water. Most of you don't understand that cold water is good for Southern California. That's what makes everything happen. That's what brings in all the bait fish. That's what makes the water super clean. That's what cleans up all the funk that's been in the water for the last seven or eight years along the Southern California coast, because we haven't had any rain like this, like we're having right now in Southern California. Those of you back East, it's the kind of rain you guys get all the time. Those of you in Florida, it's the kind of rain you get all the time. And you know how bitching your ocean is and you know how wonderful everything is there. We have that for the first time in a long, long time here in Southern California. We haven't had anything like this in a very, very long time. I grew up back in the 60s and 70s. We had winters like this all the time. It was the way it was. But what we had that we haven't had in a very long time is we had phenomenal inshore fishing back in the 60s and 70s and most of the 80s. We had sand bass, barracuda, bonita, yellowtail, really good, really good sand bass and barracuda fishing in the migratory patterns that came. Is this going to be the year that that stuff comes back? Well, the table sure is set and it sure does look like it has a very good possibility. But here's like I was talking on Pete's show yesterday. Let's talk hookup. And Corey agreed with me is uh, this is good for our Southern California because all this runoff brings in tons of nutrients into the water. You're going to see a red tide here in the springtime like you've never seen before. It's just the way it is because we added all these nutrients. So think about this right now, the plankton. The photoplankton that feeds the zooplankton is exploding at a massive rate because it hasn't seen this nutrient in the water like it has right now. All that being said, all this is going to be spectacular. And then the first time we get a real good heat up where the wind stops blowing and the rain stops blowing and the water start, stops moving and we got, we got a nice heat up, that's when you're going to see the red tide because... When that surface la layer of water gets real warm, when it gets up into the, the mid to upper 60s, that's going to kill that zooplankton and that's going to cause this red tide that they're talking about all over the place. Red tide is good for the environment. Red tide is a cleansing. Not red tide, man-made red tide. Not, not the influx of chemicals into the ocean or not the influx of sewage, raw sewage being dumped in. But a true red tide, which you're going to have in Southern California coming out of this storm pattern and all the nutrients that have been added into the water. Then the red tide comes and poof, that just cleans the ocean up like you can't even believe. Once that red tide goes away, you're going to see clarity in the water. You're going to see a phenomenal amount of anchovies along the coast because the influx of anchovies along the coast, which we've had offshore, those of you that have been fishing that bluefin, You've seen all the anchovies offshore. You've seen the giant balls of bait. You've seen the big foamers of the bluefin. But what you haven't seen is all that stuff on the beach. Back when I grew up in the 50, our 60s and 70s, there were giant schools of anchovies with big schools of sand bass and barracuda and bonita, pushing them up to the surface where we could scoop them. I believe this year you're going to see all that. And in those years, we had some of the most incredible yellowtail fishing offshore and then a fish that most of you've never even seen before has a very good possibility of showing up this year is the albacore because we've had so much water movement offshore which we haven't seen water move the way it's moved this year in a very very long time and that current coming from up north 
pushing that colder water down into our zone. This is something we haven't experienced. And I know you guys are saying, oh, well, we were out last year and we saw 64, 65 degree water. Yeah, but it went down deep. It went 64, 65 into the depths, three, 400 feet down. It was now up on the surface, it's 55, 54. And then when you get down deep, it's 48, 49. We haven't seen that in a very long time. This is going to be good. You need to relax. You need to start getting all your tackle ready and start getting everything ready. It's not going to be a, I don't believe it's going to be a full on full speed jump into it. It's going to be mayhem starting April 1st when we go rockfish fishing. I think this is going to be one of those years where it's a gradual ease into the fishing thing. You're going to be rockfish fishing in April. Then you're going to start to see a lot of wind at the end of April into the beginning of May because we're back into our normal weather system. And then come June, the water will start to warm up. July, some of the old timers always said, light the fireworks and then go fishing. And that's what I think you're going to see this year. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we'll just jump right in. And it, but historically, if anything really matters anymore or anything makes sense anymore, I believe that this stuff is going to happen that way. I think it's going to be set up that way so that I just want everybody to understand and take it easy and understand that. Yes, he did, Dave. He did mention me. Isn't that cool? Him and my sister are very good friends. So yeah, he did mention me for my birthday the other day. Big 61. But historically, and Dan, Dan's on here. He's an old-time fisherman like myself. Historically, cold water was very, very good for the Southern California fishery. And it brought in the albacore, which we haven't seen in a very long time because the water's been too warm, to be perfectly honest with you. Even though you don't think it was, it was too warm. And it's been very warm for a very long time. But now it's cold again. And now it's cold deep and it's cold way offshore and it's cold inshore and it's cold all over the place. So this is going to be one of those years that some really crazy things are going to happen. So what I would suggest you do right now is if you're coming to the show, there's going to be a few guys there that repair reels. You're going to want to get your rods, your reels, everything tuned up, get everything ready. Make sure your drags are set. Make our drag washes work. Make, hey, there's Cubby Paul. He'll tell you. Anchovy, cold water is good, good, good for Southern California fishery. It is. It's phenomenal. Well, we saw in years where that yellowfin and Dorado would show up in July. That was devastating for the inshore fishery. And it sure has been the last few years. It's just absolutely gnarly. The kelp beds die. You're going to start seeing kelp growing in places you've never seen it before because a lot of people haven't been fishing that long. A lot of people just started fishing during the El Nino of 2015. So El Nino is a neat experience for the offshore fishery, but it absolutely devastates the inshore fishery. My favorite fishery, calico bass, sand bass, barracuda, bonita, yellowtail, the kelp beds. And as you saw, the kelp pretty much was non-existent for the last six, seven years. Giant places where Dan or Cubby or myself would go in the years back in the 70s and 80s when they were giant kelp beds. Well, now there's no kelp there. Now with this cold water influx and all the nutrients that came pouring into the ocean with all these giant storms, which are getting hit with another big storm today, coming in tonight, all day tomorrow and into Wednesday and then a bunch of wind on Thursday to get rid of it. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday are going to be gorgeous to be at the show or down at Dana Point. It's a big deal, gang. Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. If you're not into fishing, you're here to watch the monkey. Dana Wharf Sport Fishing is kicking off their 50, I think it's their 52nd year of the Festival of the Whales. My dad started that back in 1971. That's incredible. That it's the longest festival in the United States of America. It is the longest running festival. Yes, it is. Look it up. It's the longest running festival without a break. They didn't stop. They've been going full on for 52 years. 
Dana Wharf Sport Fishing, Festival of the Whales, Saturday and Sunday this weekend coming up. At the same time that I'll be speaking at the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show, my little sister will be taking people whale watching down in Dana Point. Marley, you want to go see a whale, huh? Look at Marley. He is so excited. Covey, check him out. He is wound up. He's excited. They pushed that owl off to the side of the house next door. So he's wound up. But what I would promise to tell you, gang, is that you are going to be very impressed with the fishing this winter or this summer. It's going to be a different kind of fishing, but I think you're going to be very, very happy. And then come July, August, I think we got it. If we if there's ever going to be a time where that fish could come pouring back into Southern California, it would be this year. Every, the table is set. The experts are all saying it. The amount of fish that they caught up north the last two years, we're talking about albacore. We got a very good chance of seeing albacore this year, which would be phenomenal. You know what my favorite thing about albacore is? They are just the dumbest tuna of all the tuna. So those of you that are having a hard time catching bluefin, you're going to have... You're going to be blown away at how easy it is to catch these albacore. You are going to be blown away. They are the dumbest of all the tuna. And they find you. They find you. They'll help. They'll make your day. You can troll feathers around and get a hook up, and the fish will come to the corner. Pretty much all they want to do their whole life is they, when they're born, they want to get from the day they're born till you put them in the white bag. The only thing they want to do is get in that white bag with the ice in it. That is it. They want it so bad. Hopefully we all get to be involved in helping them get in that white bag this year. I hope so. A couple other things I want to talk about, gang, is that 30 by 30. You can see it. It's all over Instagram. It's all over TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. Just type in 30 by 30 California. This will have a devastating effect on the United States of America because once they get this through gang they're coming for Texas they're coming from Florida they're coming for everybody believe me once they get this thing dug through it and what what happened was without even getting a vote on it or anything the governor of the great state of California he he signed it into law he signed it he, he just signed it. He didn't even ask anybody or anything. He just signed it right in 30 by 30, and we have to have 30% more of the ocean closed by 2020 or 2030. So we got seven years left, and then they want to close it. So that's going to be important to pay attention to that. Wayne, I hope, will be on our show for a few minutes on Wednesday from the show. No show tomorrow, gang. Can't do it. We're flying to Southern California, so we won't be doing our show tomorrow. Poor Marley. He's going to miss Kelly and I tremendously. We're leaving our little monkey and our kitties for six days. It's, and I didn't want to think about poor Marley. But I'm going to see all of you at the show. Don't forget, show up wearing this shirt. It's going to be cool. You're going to get free stuff. You're going to get free stuff from Kelly Girl. She's got a massive bag of free stuff. All of our sponsors jumped in. And uh, just be prepared for this cold water. Don't get all, all grumpy because you're not catching bluefin in March or April. Just understand it's going to take a little while for things to start happening. But you know what we do have? We have a plethora of spots at yoursaltwaterguide.com where you can go onto my website and you can gather up all the artificial reefs and gather up all the rock piles and gather up all the stuff so that you have fun fishing while we wait for this, this the rest of the puzzle to come together and wait for the rest of it to all start to happen. But you'll still be able to catch fish if you follow our simple instructions at yoursaltwaterguide.com. And don't forget, our any day now, we're going to launch that app. And it's going to be available for for all Apple products and also all Androids, Android products. It's always so hard for me to say. It's going to be available for everybody. It's going to be the best fishing app ever produced. We're going to, the community alone is going to be like the best code group ever. So I just want you all to make sure that you understand it's going to take a little patience this year for that offshore thing to come together. But I think you're going to see 
better white sea bass fishing than most of you have ever seen. You're going to see better yellowtail under the kelp paddy fishing than most of you have ever seen. You might not see any Dorado in Southern California until maybe September because of the cold water. Maybe not. Maybe I'm, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. And history will show us that Dave doesn't know anything, but that's what it looks like to me and a lot of the experts. So be careful with what you do and what you say. Make sure you turn off the news. Only watch your saltwater guide every day at 12 o'clock. And then I'll tell you what, what you should or shouldn't be doing as we cruise along. But no, thank you once again, everybody, for being a part of this. My good, That's my good friend, Todd Mansur. Can you imagine being on the show at 12 o'clock? Yeah, on the show at 12, knowing I do the show every day at 12, being one of my very best friends and then calling three times during the show at 12. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Hold on. Let me just... I'm just sending him a message asking him, what time is it? Because he keeps sending these. Now he just sent me another message. Call me. Unbelievable, gang. Unbelievable. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. We have to run to the airport and pick up our friends that are coming here to take care of our monk. Little Marley, dude. What are you doing? Little Marley, the rescue marmoset monkey, our rescue cat. We got a flawn zoo here. We have a zoo. All right, gang. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of everything I do. I cannot believe this. I just can't believe it. Right now, it, my YouTube channel is gaining six. 500 subscribers a month. It's just amazing. And it's all because of you guys only. Thank you. I'll see you all at the show on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. What day is going to be the slowest? <sighs> there aren't going to be any slow days there, gang. I promise you that. If you're waiting for the slow day, it ain't going to happen. Just come. Be early. Be early. Be early. You want to be early. Everybody, Poke Wayne. Tell him to be on our show Wednesday. We need Wayne Katow to be on the show on Wednesday. It's super important, Wayne. We need you to be on the show on Wednesday. Thank you, everybody. Tell Wayne. Bye.